Hey, thanks for coming to the channel. My name is Mike Otterbein. I am uh, talking today about some code uh, over here on the left I wrote. I have Android. It's live because I'm talking to uh, devices. And on the right we have some code over here and I keep starting and stopping this um, video because I'm trying to give a high level meaningful or I don't know meaningful a high level description of my code and I keep getting sucked down these rabbit holes. So let me try to give let me try this again. So I have this application over on the left. I wrote this. It's Otterbein Solutions, blah, 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 version 1.033. What is it? It is an application that basically in your configuration, in your setup, you are going to select either a Bluetooth device or a Wi-Fi device. And Wi-Fi is a port and, and an address. A Bluetooth, a Bluetooth is going to be one of your paired devices. Of course, you go off and you pair your device to your Bluetooth uh, to your Android uh, independently. Right now, um, okay, okay. So, and what this does? What does this application do? Is it communicates to cars, uh, vehicles, European and American vehicles, <clears throat> through an OBD2 connection, which is either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Of course, nothing's hooked up right now this I'm scooting this in the camera this is what the end of the connector this is when you get your car inspected this is what they plug in something that looks like this it's basically the same connector but I have a bunch of these here's a really cheap one that blew up or stopped working or burnt out or something I don't know what happened because I'm experimenting I, I want to I it's it's interesting in testing I, I bought like some really like I went to Amazon I specifically look for really low rated hardware and I bought it and it actually helped me harden up some of the code. Like one, one, you know, there's a spec where it says you're supposed to return a new uh, uh, carriage, specifically a carriage return. I think that's OD hex. And this thing was returning like a new line. Like, like it, it just like it didn't matter. And, and it, I think that was causing it to get the low ratings because it wasn't responding properly. And of course, I hardened my, I, I just put that, it was, I'm using um, regex. What the hell is uh See, I can't, I use the term escapes me to um, filter out the data that's coming in. So I just added a, um, you know, that extra or uh, to the condition. Regular expressions. What's the matter with me? So anyway, la 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 la. <clears throat> so this thing communicates to vehicles um, through Wi-Fi or, or dongle and. It's uh, up to version 13, and it, it's had some really crappy versions, and I think we're pretty tight now. It's multi-threaded, as you might be able to see. So, you know, so we have this interaction with the UI with the buttons, the status message, um, things, this nice little animation. Look at that, nice turns red. Did you see that? When, when I get an error. So you got some nice little UI cues. I'm trying to do this on, on a level that I would do it for a, uh, I mean, the highest paid job that I ever would have. I'm doing this, you know. Although nobody's paying me anything to do this at this point, so I um, the ideal thing is it would read in and okay, so fine. I'm just showing a bunch of pictures of it not working, but basically, um, it's just an app. I think I'm at a point where it's pretty tight, and it's very simple. The scope of it, of course, is easier to make it tight when your scope is tight, right? When when you don't keep adding features. So I, I, it has one or two specific features. It'll read your codes. It'll clear your codes. It'll what will it do? It'll read your these things are called status monitors um, that every car has to have. Um, it's kind of a car thing, you know. It's like I'm familiar with cars a little bit, so whatever. There's some. The ubiquitous not the ubiquitous um, terminology is not exactly worked out yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so the, over here on the right is the uh, application for this, and what I have is uh, what, what we have here are uh, basically three flavors, three, three platforms. I'm sorry. I'm over here talking, mumbling to myself. We've got three platforms. Android is really all I'm concerned about in this case. The Windows, I would write, write I have another Windows program uh, uh, that I write. This is the universal Windows. This is kind of funny. I'm not that happy with this. iOS, at some point, if I ever become for real with this application, will certainly move on to that. So this has got to stay. Uh, basically, we have a main application, and then we have some common stuff. And then, like for example, in our Android, there's really not a lot of stuff going on. 
uh, what we have is we have hardware implementations, really, specifically anything that's platform specific. Um, you know, DI is the, is the uh, buzzword here, right? So this Wi-Fi I'm not using because I'm not like, you know, trying to look for networks and open and close your network or why I'm not doing any of that, right? All this application does is it tries to open up a socket. So it doesn't even need to be Android specific. Bluetooth on the other case, Bluetooth in an Android, unlike PC, Bluetooth on a PC, if you're writing for a Bluetooth serial port, you're going to just talk to a COM port. I mean, if you have any sense. I mean, you might have to talk to a Bluetooth device directly if it's some other type of Bluetooth other than a serial port. But if it's a serial port, you're talking to a COM port. And that's very easy, and you probably already have code for that, like I do have for, for that, and TCP. Bluetooth, you're going to have to write an implementation for the Android platform, which really isn't too bad. Um, you can find it all over the Internet. Uh, actually, maybe I should make this available for people, right? But uh, here, here's my Bluetooth uh, file, my Bluetooth implementation. Um, it's in, indicated as an implementation using this attribute up here. The implementation that, that's targeting this, uh, this interface here, which is what any communication device, whether it's, a Bluetooth, uh, whether it's this Bluetooth thing here, whether it's a COM port on a PC, or whether it's a TCP, IP, TCP socket, which is what this is also applies to. But here on this Android uh, project, this is a specific implementation of the iCommunications interface and this will serve up Bluetooth, right? So, of course, back at the, um, I don't know, do I have this search here? So, of course, when we are, of course, here, here, here's an example of where my sockets, are, for example, are implementing, I think it's TC, I don't know if this is a legit class I'm using, but this TCP socket is also implementing the iCommunications device, right? So, but the TCPI socket is actually not part of the platform. TCPI socket is, is in my common. It's a, uh, where is that? Where is this? Do I have this? Models? There it is. TCPI socket is a general common uh, TCP socket, right? It doesn't have to be Bluetooth. It could be Bluetooth or uh, Windows. Okay, did I beat that horse to death? Okay. You know, beat a horse. Uh, I, f I forget even the expression. <laughs> so, um, so basically, the project is going to have <clears throat> its startup is going to be a, a particular platform. However, you know, sort of secondarily to that, the main project here is this OBD2 project, which has all the views, which are not a lot, right? Over here at this application, again, over to the left, uh, there's not a lot of views. I'm using the shell, uh, by the way. Um, to do this, uh, a few views, yeah, a couple of views. Actually, I actually have an interesting view because I have as uh, I support ads, so I have another actual ads interface. Let me see this. Yeah, I forgot about that. I have uh, this is the straight up, no, f you know, full full on version, and then I have this um, ads version. Let me see if I can show that right here right so here whoop, 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 whoop. I just minimized it I mean I don't think you can see that I minimized it but I minimized it on myself right here it is Do I have that yeah okay so this is an ads version and the difference is is that there's um there's ads <laughs> so both um so I had to figure out a way to support ads and to inject ads like in segments of the code, which was a really interesting problem to solve. So I'm looking for, oh right, so the ads implementation, right, this is gonna be like an empty one for my, right, what we're looking at here, well, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm switching, I'm not even, oh geez. So I'm, I'm switched back over to here to my, um, my standard solution. And I, I'm, here's my ad service for my standard solution, which is like an empty, there's like nothing going on here. Um, but like for my ads solution, I have this um, project called, wait a minute, why am I, oh, because I'm on the desktop. Okay, oh, geez, Louise, what is going on here? What is going on here? 
Okay, that's good enough. Fine. Um, so I have this. It's a little small. Sorry. So I have this uh, ads. You know what? I'm not even going to go there. Let's like, see. That's another rabbit hole that I keep going down. So let me let me go back. Let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. So basically, let me grab one of my view models in the view model. Now this is very MVVM. This is this is nicer than uh, WPF. This is very WPF-ish, but it's much more streamlined for MVVM. It comes out of the box MVVM. So um, just to give you an example of what the ads thing does, if I go to my view model, uh, my home view model, where I am getting the status. So let me go to that command. Uh, get status command. There's some, something get vehicle status command, right? Here's the command. I have this ad service that I have to run sometimes if I want to force an ad in between clicking the button. So I needed to have this here all of the time, but I needed that if it's empty, that it doesn't interrupt. Like this app right here, this when I hit this go button, it was checking to see if there was a pop-up and of course the the ad service is not active and the pop-up is not happening so it went right to the button so the full version still is sort of the ad version but it's just blowing through the ads because there's an empty ad as the implementation there's always got to be some ad implementation so what people don't un don't know right the users the end users they 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 use something that has no ads in it but they don't understand that their version actually supports ads it's just that the implementation that it's packaged with is empty. Um, oh, by the way, so let's take a look at that ad, that that uh, ads app. Anyway, let's. Ah, uh, jeez, oh, the button's so small. Let's uh, since I keep talking about it, right? Let me close everything. Let me come back here. Where is this? Okay, so I have this thing. It, this is what's on Google Play right now. I'm going to move this out to production, the light version, right? So here it is, and up here is this ad. So I don't, right now, I have this problem. If I force, you need a connection to the internet to get these ads to work. So if I force in between clicking a button to do a pop-up, it will um, hold up the entire app until you stop, you know, until you sort of close all. I really can't see doing that to people because otherwise there would be a pop-up that would, let me, um, let me see if I can do that, right? So if I come over to my my ads so what I'm going to do is I'm coming over to my ads project and I have in here these constants so I have pop-up pop-ups are active is false so I'm going to say that the pop-up actives are pop-up ads are active is true interstitial ad that's what a pop-up ad is interstitial I don't I never even heard that word in my life but that an interstitial ad is a pop-up ad so let me see if I can run this now this thing over here to the left is sitting here and it should let me run that now it should stop what's over here on the left and restart it. Now I'm not going to touch my phone and s except maybe maybe to adjust it a little bit, but I'm not going to click anything. I'm not going to close the app. So my um, compiler, by the way, is doing TCP debugging. And come on. So I'm just waiting for this thing to, um, ooh, that, look at all that white in the green right here. That looks like it's going to take a long time, right? Okay, anyway, so while that's building, I guess we can continue to look at this. So basically, um, I have an Android platform that is doing ads. Oh, are we ready to run? Looks like, it, seems, it makes it look like it's ready to run, and then you look at the green, and you're like, wait a minute, this is... This is still not happening. So I'm leaving the ad, uh, the ads version up over on the left in hopes that this thing will just detect it, stop it, reinstall it, and go. So let's see. And, well, it's taking forever though, right? So 
Okay, so, so basically what I have is I have um, this platform over here and I do have a little bit of redundancy because I did copy the, the um, Android Bluetooth so I do have two copies of that and I want to keep them separate. Um, what, what happened? Installation of fa failed. Okay, so let me come over here. Let me do this, right? So let me close everything. Because actually I installed this off of Google Play. So let me uninstall this. I think it might have been signed. I think Google Play signs it with yet a different. So that's off my app. Let me try again. Let me see if my deployment has another error. I would you know, you can't assume too much. Anyway, so I actually have a separate um, project for the Android app than I do for um, the, not, the, the ad app than I do for the non-ad app. And one of the reasons is because it's very specific about, like when you use ads that they're attached to a very specific um, application, that they have certain IDs and numbers and things in there so that the full application actually uh, came after the ads application. So, uh, so this has a completely different identity. Um, oh, here we go. All right, see, I was just talking nonsense till this started on the left. So what, what was the point of start, restarting the, the, the ad app on the left is that I turned the pop-up ads. Okay, so now, now I think I, now what happens is I'll let you do this like three times or something. All right, so let me, here's a shortcut to skipping through this and getting through the weights, right? So the Bluetooth, I'll just disable the Bluetooth. Now my app should say, you don't have a Bluetooth device right away. Oh, let me see. Yeah, see? And then that helps me skip. Now, like on the third time, yeah, I think this time now, now it's trying to run an ad, right? Now, if it does, I was kind of just stuck there. If you're just operating with the, the application, you're going to say, oh, geez, what's going on? Uh, see, this, see, I, and there's other problems, right? Why is this app not running? Why is this ad not running? See, I just found, I just, see, right now, this, discussing to you with you this app, I think it's because that, Ad has to be run on the main thread, and I'm, oh, well, so much for that. See, see, it's a little crappy. I don't like it. It's it's too it's too nasty, and it's all in your face, right? So let's see. I could do it like three times. One, two, three, right? That's what happens. You get to you get to use the function three times or whatever. Um, it time it took so long for the ad that my communications timed out. All right, that ad, to, you know, maybe things had to... See, see, I'm not comfortable with this. It would make this ad version of the app really crappy for, you know, people to say, Oh, look, God, I don't want to use this anymore, right? So what I've decided to do, and I was testing, right? You saw me shut off the, uh, the do pop-ups. What I can do instead is I'll give the end user the ads... But I'm going to take away the ability to clear the codes. I'll give them the ability to read the codes, which is actually very important because that's actually, that's actually the most important thing. Clearing the codes is easy. So I believe if I write an app and I have some ads in there and I don't do the pop-up thing, that it'll perform nicer. If I just make it so that the non-ad, if you want to, you know, give me $3 or something and then you can clear your codes, that if I've been able to get that person to understand what the problem was by letting them read the code and deal with the ads, that if this all works for them, that they might say, you know, I'll give this guy $3 and do the clear you know, buy, buy the full uh, non-app and, and I'll put the clear button. Right now, at this moment, the full ad, the full app is out there. You can clear. Like, if you download this right now, you get this full thing, it'll clear. It'll show these ads and it won't do the pop-up thing. I don't like the pop-up thing. I'm going to, so, so, now I come back to, um, to uh, the code over here and we find this, um, where is this, uh, right, so, uh, pop-up ads are active no I, I at the, especially what I just saw I really can't I, I'm to me that's 
it's too much, right? It's too much. So let me let me run this. Now now this should just bulldoze over. I'm going to leave it running into the left side over here. Now it should just bulldoze over uh, that app. Uh, and it should run a little faster. Should Everything should be pretty much built. Yeah, because, uh, I don't know, because of something. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Come on. So, what I'm waiting for... What am I waiting for? I am waiting for this thing to come in here and just sort of uh, bulldoze... Yeah, I'm talking over this because it's taking so long. All right. So anyway, so there's the ads version of the app. We'll just let you know. So forget that. We're done looking at the ads, right? So I'm um, now I'm back to the regular um, OBD2 um, application, which really is this is what it's about. But you know, as a developer, the ads problem. Um, uh, hint, hint. We're waiting for the thing on the left to like refresh itself. The ads, uh, the ads problem, or the ads. Um, Task. Oh, there we go. There we go. So it should start for me. Right. There we go. Right. It's it's nice to know at least somewhat that you know what you're supposed to happen. So now what I'm doing is this is the version that will not do any pop-ups. Right. So boom, boom, boom. Right. So I can sit here. I can I can I can do these functions all day long. It's never going to do a pop-up. And here's the thing. If you don't have a, a, a connection to the internet, this thing would never come back, right? It's just not acceptable. What I'll do is I will disable, when I roll out the full final production, I will disable the clear button on the ad version. And, and if you want the full version, it'll clear. Hopefully that I made you happy that you could read. It worked for you. If it didn't work for you, throw it away. It's like another garbage app, right? <laughs> this is, uh, but this is a discussion really more of like, the technical aspects. Now, this is getting so long. I just wanted to go and just, like, you see this light up here? All right. Oh, right. Okay, so let me, let me get it so we can see the light blink a little bit. Let me turn my Bluetooth on. Let me make my application at least look for the device. Yeah, there's, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Now, you see the blue light here? It's looking right now. It's looking for that device. Um, that blue light, I, I got to tell you, you know, some people do. Okay, so now I am going to, what am I going to turn on over here? Here's a monitor over here, right? So here, let me minimize these two things. I had to get into a thing called Blender, right? Here, here, here's like, for example, like the, uh, like my logo stuff, man, you know? Like, doing this, like, you don't know how frustrating it is. You're trying to do software, and then it's like, oh, but you got to do this picture thing. Where here, here's, here's something really interesting. See this right here, this, this uh, image? If you notice, it's a PNG that bleeds over transparently. Think about that. A, 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 the mist is semi-transparent, right? The, the the button itself is solid. The mist over is like, you know, like so. You look at this on a de on a black desktop. See this blue LED over here, right? You look at it on a, it. It looks like it actually has a little bit of an emission of a glow, but that's just because the the like if I just open this with some picture viewer. Let me bring this over here, right? You can see the uh, the glow. Do you get what I'm saying? That was like a freak. That was hard. It took me. It took me. Some people are looking at this who do Blender all the time. Like, what's your problem? That's easy. I know it, it is easy when you know how to do it. Here, here's the button, right? I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to mess with it because I've. It's been days or maybe a week or so since I messed with this. So I'm afraid. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So I'm afraid of messing this up. So I'm not going to even try to adjust anything while we're looking at this. But this is the kind of. Um, stuff this is gimp this is just a, a video then you got to take it and you got to make layers right it's it's I, I just wanted to show you stuff like that like th that's involved man with with writing this software um the having to go you know there's videos out there i, I think i 
I'm not sure about this. I have another channel that's not so much for my professional work, but you know, I go out to the cars and I have to like unhook cables and plugs and do really things you would never really do to a healthy car to, to induce, you know, electrical computer detected errors and um and this ads thing and it just you know and then i had to put some stuff on my website so that the ads would know that it my application was written by the same guy whose developer was linked to his web it's crazy like from the glowing button to doing the ads to the architecting how do the ads go into the application um you know and um it's just you know I, I just wanted to I, I don't I barely even touched the thing because there's like like here's a question like exactly how is the structure of of a task like when I for example oh man I need a diagram I need to pull out the whiteboard uh, like for, here's the question when I click when I hit get status what happens you know do I just start sending data or do I have to sort of put together like what data I'm going to send and then sort of set it to well, what I do? Um, let me not play games. I have to, I can't just send the data. I don't just take the data and send it right. When I do this, I have to first see if it says connecting. I have to first connect. Can I even connect to this thing? If I can't connect, then I have to throw everything away. Right. I need a diagram to show you this, but, but just in your head, like, like what I, you know, and you don't have to be a programmer. Like the first thing I have to do is do is I create a set of work and I put it over to the side. If I can't connect, I throw it away. <laughs> I'll forget all that. It's a bunch of instructions and things to do if it connects, right? So so I build all that stuff. I say connect. It's like it's like what you'd never do. Like if you were carrying stuff, it's like I'm going to carry 20, 200 pounds, you know, down the block, and then you find out that the store is closed, and like you didn't even care. It's like I'm not even going to check, and you just throw it away. But of course, it's not that kind of an effort. It's just like easy. Once it connects, then it has to go. And, and if you are a programmer, this is all asynchronous, right? It's then after it connects, then it has to say, oh, on kind, con, on, upon the client having a successful connection, let me go check to see if there's anything in the action queue. If there's anything in the action queue, let me run it. Then I run over to the action queue, which may be several things, but I'll start on number one, and I'll see that this is a command to initialize the device, which guess what, is another set of actions, right? To initialize the device, I have to send an ATZ command for it to reinitialize. Then I have to send another command to s set the spaces off. Then I want to turn the memory off because I don't want to wear that out then I have to stop you know what I'm saying so so just to initialize forget about getting the status to just initialize the device to get the status I have to like create a bunch of stuff put it to the side I have to try to open the device if it doesn't work I have to throw it away also I have to keep a timer right in the background um uh, like here, this thing saying I can't access your device, but what if I say, um, what if I say, what if I say Wi-Fi? Now that's a little totally legit. Who, who's to say whether this exists or not? Nobody can say that. If the Wi-Fi is off, I can say, yeah, you know, you're out of luck, man. But if the Wi-Fi is on, I cannot say this doesn't exist. What can I do? I can't do anything. All I can do is just uh, say I waited. I waited at the bus station and nobody showed up. And that's what it does with a Wi-Fi, right? It's, it's trying to connect. And then it has to time out. I, the timeout's not too long. Like sometimes, you know, I time out pretty quick. Maybe that could be longer. We'll get to that. Or maybe I can put that in the settings. This is all, right? This is, this is our little world. But um, just the amount of stuff to get this application going, man, it's 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 awesome. It's really cool. It's really keeps it like it's it's like makes my brain sharp if that's at all possible. Uh, what else? Uh, I I could go. There's a lot of stuff to go into. Like f the um, uh, let me go. Where is the application? Where I'm I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. Um, for example, in in all of these view models, like. Uh, uh, Right, this this uh, this command I keep like, like, right here. Get DTCs, right? If I say read, what exactly is that, right? Let's just uh, I'm I'm not gonna blow too much into this. Uh, 
I'm not gonna go too crazy into uh, just give you a, right, what, what what was that uh, we're reading right from the codes page so I'm in the codes view model I'm looking for my read something command we we'll get read something what are, what is it clear there's clear DTCs how about read get DTCs what is this I see I don't even know what it is read re get select does anybody see? There it is. Read DTC's command. See, I don't even, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what's going on here. I, I can't remember from minute to minute. I go in an interview, and I, I talk to people who, like, do, like, only one thing their whole life. They know everything about something. And they'll be like, we here at fill in the blank, we don't do stupid stuff like MVVM. You know, I, I hear stuff like this. You know, one time I heard in an interview... MVC can't hold a candle to to web forms. Web forms is superior with all those data going back and forth. I'm sitting there astounded. You talk about MVC paired with like what Angular or some kind of like front end framework. You're telling me that um, I'm, I'm digressing. Let me just finish the thought though. You're telling me that web forms is more powerful, and more sophisticated than MVC than than. What, what does that tell you? It tells you that somebody doesn't really understand the architecture of what they're dealing with. Oh, mama. Okay, anyway, how dare, how dare I say I dare say it. I dare say it. I'm guilty. Even if you're a professional looking at my saying, who is this guy? I dare. I said it. I said it. Okay? Anyway, so there's my application. Um, that's the high level view. Uh, I guess I could drill into something. I have no idea, man. There's communications. There's, uh, the, this, like these logos, these, some, you know, I get into these pictures and, you know, the, the logos, uh, let me, let me see if I can pull up a director. It, it, yeah. What, what, no, let me see where, where my pictures are. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's just, it, it's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy, you know, but, um. And then you realize, oh, and the Pi. Oh, the Raspberry Pi stuff, the hardware. I didn't even mention. I didn't even mention. Oh, what am I doing over here? Uh, uh, you know, uh, let me, I'm, I was about to wrap up the video. And I am about to wrap up the video. Don't, don't, get, too, don't get too concerned. It's, it's, it's all right. So let me um, uh, get rid of this stuff. Yeah, there's my, um, you know, what am I doing? Move, move this over here. Uh, oh, my goodness. Somebody, oh, Oh my goodness. Anyway, so these are the dongles that I'm using. I'm a little out of focus, aren't I? Let me try to see if I can improve that a little bit. So these are this is a Wi-Fi dongle. Wi-Fi seems to be pretty fast. Bluetooth, another this is excellent Bluetooth. Um this is something that burnt out. And then I have a Raspberry Pi uh, network on a desk to sort of just prove out some things because there, there's some commands you talk right to the dongle with. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Very good. Listen, I appreciate you coming by to the channel. Um, this channel is uh, uh, so, so, sort of like a technical... Not, not really like real super technical, but kind of technical, right? So nobody really asked me any questions, but maybe, you know, I'd be happy to whatever. All right. So, hey, look, thanks for watching, right? That's the main thing. Or maybe that's part. And that's not. The, no, the main thing is that you have a good life and a great day, right? But it's another good thing that you watched. So I'm glad that you came and that you watched. Um... And uh, we'll just see what goes on, you know. We'll just see what happens with life and everything. And um, there it is. All right. So, again, have a great day and thanks for coming by.